from the chamber of the cyclotron. While the cyclotron is in operation, no one must be in the hall, for the high energy particles are dangerous to human beings. The cyclotron is switched on. When it is operating, many particles are accelerated at once in the chamber. Several million portions are ejected every second. They are ejected into a special chamber where there is likewise a vacuum. The particles fly through this chamber and bombard the target. That is how a cyclotron works. At the Institute of Nuclear Problems under the USSR Academy of Sciences, a still more powerful accelerator, a synchrotron, has now been operating for several years. Here is the main hall where this gigantic machine is stationed, a machine which makes it possible to obtain protons with an energy of 680 million electron volts. The diameter of the poles of the electromagnet is six meters, and the magnet weighs about 7,000 tons. In between the poles is the acceleration chamber. In this chamber, during a fraction of a second, the particles cover a distance equal to that from Moscow to Leningrad. Their velocity has come close to the velocity of light. A powerful high-frequency generator is mounted here. The frequency of the generator alters in the process of particle acceleration. This is essential because at very high energies of the particles, their acceleration is accompanied by an increase in their mass. In order that the frequency should change in strict accordance with the increase of the mass, the synchrotron has a special device called a frequency variator. Protons are accelerated in the chamber, but if a target of beryllium is placed in the chamber and bombarded with protons, we can obtain neutrons with an energy running into hundreds of millions of electron volts. By changing targets, it is possible to obtain other particles as well. The rod with the target is now being introduced into the chamber. The high energy particles emerge from the chamber through a slit covered with thin aluminium sheet. They enter holes in the thick protective concrete wall. Through these holes, the beams of particles enter other rooms where there are instruments and devices for various investigations. To make fuller use of the high energy particles, Several instruments are placed in the path of each beam. This device is being made ready to measure proton energies. Here, a device is being adjusted to register nuclear particles. It registers scintillations lasting one hundred millionth of a second. Such scintillations result from the passage of the particles through various substances. There are dozens of these devices in the room. This apparatus is for studying the forces operating between neutrons, as well as between neutrons and protons. This ring of paraffin wax serves to scatter neutrons. This is a chamber for observing and photographing charged particles. The chamber is filled with a superheated liquid. When a charged particle passes through it, it leaves a track of gas bubbles in the liquid. Here is a photograph of such tracks. It clearly shows the path of the particles in the liquid. The particles emerging from this slit are of particular interest to science. These are pi mesons. Before, 
They were observed only in cosmic rays.